We all are imperfect. We have flaws. We struggle with these flaws on a very regular basis. But some of us are actually celebrating these flaws and treating them as if they are true barriers to keep us from actually getting what we want to want accomplished in our life. We're talking about celebrating your flaws this week on episode 215 of The Relaxed Mail. This is The Relaxed Mail, a show that comes to you each week helping men to remove the nice guy from their life so they can actually live their life on their terms. Join the host certified coach Brian Goodwin as he helps men step out of their heads and become free from the thoughts that bind them. Hey man, hello and welcome to Relax Mail. I'm your host, Brian, and I am a certified men's coach who assists men who are just neck deep in the suffering of their life. Men who are going through things like divorce or job loss or any things along those lines. Men who are just going through their day-to-day struggles. Life comes at us fast and sometimes we just become so overwhelmed that uh, we don't know what to do. I can help you and I can help other men get to the root of what their suffering is. Help them step back and examine what's going on in their life. Look at what their thoughts are and get to the root of that problem so that they can actually start living the life on their terms and stop playing the victim. So, and today we're talking about one of the biggest things that holds us back. What we perceive to be our flaws, our limitations, confines, distortions, scars, imperfections, our irregularities, whatever, however you want to look at it. We look at these problems and we decide, oh, well, that's the reason why I, I'm, I'm not successful because I've got ADHD or I, I'm, and I hate the word that they use, but neurodivergent instead of, you know, instead of whatever it is, they want to try to put everything onto, onto a spectrum. And no, there's a lot of really clear cut lines and there's a lot of differences in, in my opinion. So these But all of these are just, they're limitations. They are limitations, but they don't have any power over you. And that's what we want to talk about this week is just why do we look at our limitations and why do we celebrate them? We we hold them up to the light like, yeah, this is why I'm a failure. And we're going to stop that. We're going to stop looking at our problems as being a problem. And we're going to start looking at them as a solution yet before we actually dive into that I want to again say thanks to everybody welcome the new listeners welcome the guys who are coming in got some uh talk to a gentleman all the way from uh from bangladesh i mean we had a really good uh discussion uh back on uh back on on friday and it was just it was a great discussion and and just to be able to know that we're getting out all the way over to, you know, on the opposite side, literal opposite side of the world. He was 12 hours ahead of me. So <laughs> he's, he is a, this guy was, was such a, a, a such a breath of, of fresh air. And it was just neat to hear that, Hey, people are coming across. He coming, they're finding, you know, they're finding my, 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 blog post, they're finding the podcast, they're listening, they're consuming, they're becoming inspired, and they're they're taken away. And the cool thing about it is, is that it's okay that it's taken seven years for this to really take off. Sometimes you have to provide a crap ton of value or a whole lot of, of force to get something to start moving. And we're starting to move. And that's what's so great. So guys, if this is the first time listening, thank you very much for listening. Come in and come in, make yourself at home and hit that, uh, hit that like follow button and follow subscribe. However, whatever your, your podcast platform choice is, uh, says, and that way you get this podcast downloaded to your, uh, to your phone, to your tablet, whatever it is you have the moment this, uh, it comes available, which is typically right around, uh, uh, Thursday, about three o'clock in the morning, central time. So, <laughs> so I may set it up so that it has plenty of time to go through, get downloaded and is setting ready for you to, to, to hear. So let's get on ahead and let's dive into this celebrating our flaws. And this, we, we often see ourselves as a flawed person and there is the members of society that want you to celebrate those flaws, embrace the fact that you've got ADHD and that you can't sit still or that you're an introvert and that you can't get out amongst people because you know, you're an introvert. You can't be around people. Well, no, that's bull. We know that's bull because there's a lot of very extroverted introverts out there in the world. 
I am one. I love to, I can be by myself. I have no problem being by myself, but at the same time, I like being around people because I have told myself I like to be around people and you can actually change what you think of the, uh, your, your problem, your limitation, your flaw actually is. And that's the real sad that society and those who are supposed to be helping people come and step through that, that problem often want to help us embrace that limitation. No, you can, you can accept that you have this uh, limitation, but you don't have to, to embrace it. Yeah. Do you have, you know, maybe you've got one leg that's shorter than the other by a a good amount, or maybe you ended up losing a foot or losing the, you had diabetes and you're, you're, or as, as Wilford Brimley calls it, diabetes. And you, you know, so, and you may have lost a foot because of it, because you hadn't been taking care of yourself. You lost your foot, lost a foot. Is that really a limitation? Well, it is. If you want to believe it is. Or just means that it's just a small obstacle, so that uh, that will keep you that will keep you grounded if you allow it. I mean, come on, you got uh, what's his name? Uh, was his uh, oh Summer Olympics didn't have any legs and uh, and was blowing people out of the uh, out of the dirt. Was that Usain Bolt or was did Usain Bolt have a uh, Jamaican runner? Can't remember if he. Uh, all right, let's see. Yeah, he's got his legs. Okay, now, so it's not Usain Bolt. He uh, he's the fastest dude uh, out there, but I can't remember who was the uh, Oscar Pistorius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They called him Blade Runner, and uh, and uh, he actually broke several uh, <laughs> several several records because of the because he had a disability. He had a limitation. He had a flaw. He didn't have legs, but yet he's one of the fastest guys on earth. And why is that? Because he didn't look at his limitations as a limitations. He looked at it as an obstacle that he had to, he had to figure out how to get over. And once you figure out how to get over a, over a barrier, over a limitation, you can do it repeatedly over and over and over and over and over again. Because you see any of our flaws gets, can be addressed by two really good questions. These are good, powerful questions. The first one is what does this make possible? Any barrier, any problem that you come across, that's the best question to ask. What does this make possible? I lost my foot. That, what do you mean that makes, what does this make possible? It, that, that's a problem and the solu- and it makes it possible for you to find the solution. That solution opens up a lot of doors if you choose to actually use those doors. You have a lot of opportunities because you had a issue come about and you covered that issue. You overcame that problem. You took the confines and accepted them, integrated them into your life. And now you have more freedom all because you asked and you answered, what does this make possible? And another way to kind of look at that is what can I learn from this limitation? I've got a uh, ADHD. Well, what does that tell you that you can actually do multiple things and you're actually more more efficient by doing multiple things, looking at one thing, doing another. And yeah, it may be that you really need to knuckle down and focus on one particular item for a couple of hours. And that might be a struggle for you. But if you figure out how to handle that, you have no problem overcoming that. Many common flaws that today's society is really dr- uh, just driven into our head as being a limitation that we need to embrace. ADHD. So many kids. They just go through and just throw so much at at these ADHD kids, these kids who are hyperactive. They just attention deficit. Well, first off, who are you to say that my attention level is not right for me? Who is that doctor to say that this attention level isn't right for me? Is it the teacher? The te- oh, he's not paying attention long enough. Well, no, teach. Sorry, but that's your part of your job is to figure out how to inspire kids to pay attention to the, to the class. If you can't inspire them, that's your problem. That's on you. And that's something I'm, me and teachers were, uh, my kids teachers, we had lots of arguments over that very topic. When my son was, was in first, second, third grade, all those teachers were instantly wanting to go. Uh, he needs to go ahead. You probably need to go see a uh, see a psychiatrist, a doctor, and get him diagnosed because he acts like he's got ADHD. And I'm like, going, no. I told him, no. He's not going on any freaking meds. You do your job. And got a lot of teachers who really resented him because he was he was a handful. <laughs> he was he was a a handful in a in 
because he was not going to sit still. But that's all boys, though. All boys don't sit still. They do not learn by sitting being a good girl. Girls have a tendency to sit and be able to watch and and learn. While boys, we are hands-on. You want us to be able to sit still and learn, then we've got to run our asses off. We've got to climb. We've got to jump. We've got to swing as high as we can. We've got to see if we can make our friend fly off the off the teeter-totter. I don't even think they allow teeter-totters on on uh parks anymore but you know that might be something i do one day is make it make a playground that has all the good sl- good playground equipment on it the metal slide that burns your skin off as you slide down on on high noon the uh the witch's hat and the monkey swings and the merry-go-rounds and the monkey bars and the teeter-totters most places have got place you know things that for kids to just kind of run around on but yeah, that's good to work your legs, but you also got to need upper upper body strength. And so, and I know I'm I'm off topic, and that we're okay. But they look at ADHD, and many people address ADHD as something that keeps you from being able to concentrate. Funny, they decide they've looked at many uh, uh, CEOs, and those CEOs are often described as being ADHD. They can switch. They go from one place to another. They can't be in one place too long. So that gives them the ability to go see what's happening in in marketing, go see what's happening in manufacturing, go to sales, go to accounting, go to over here and go to there and go to there and go to there and go to there and let's go to this meeting and that meeting and go over here. And they're always moving. They may have a desk, but they rarely are ever sitting at that desk because they had ADHD. Look at Edison. Whether you think his personality, he was a good dude personality wise or not, this dude did a whole lot. And they have decided that he probably was somebody who had ADHD. ADHD is a freaking superpower if you choose for it to be a superpower. If you choose for it to not be a superpower, that's fine. But you're going to hold yourself back. Again, I mentioned introversion. That can be seen as a superpower or it can be seen as a limitation. But the funny thing is, is introversion is just what uh, the story you tell yourself. Can, do you actually get more, do you become more recharged by being by yourself? Probably, yeah. But that is not an excuse for you to not go see people. That's why you have so much anxiety is because you don't want to go out and talk to people. And we've celebrated the fact that we don't talk to each other near as much anymore. My wife has a, has a shirt that says, I hate stupid people or something along those lines. And yeah, it's funny. I saw a guy uh, yesterday at Walmart who has, I I hate morning people and mornings and people. I mean, it's, it's funny, but at the same time, that is showing our society how much we are not connecting with each other anymore. And a lot of it is because we have everybody running around going, ah, oh, I'm an introvert. I just don't like, well, you, you'll definitely be willing to go out amongst people if you do something that you actually like. Introversion. And deciding that you can't go out because you're an introvert is just an excuse. And that's somebody who is accepting the flaw and celebrating it. I'm an introvert. Yay. So I don't have to go out. I don't have to do anything. I can, I can stay at home and be disabled. And there's people who say the introversion is a disability, which is insane. No, it's not a disability. It's just a line of thinking. You can change your thoughts. I thought I was an introvert for the longest time until I realized if I want to make a business, have a business, I've got to deal with people. If I'm going to deal with people, I have to become more extroverted. So I am a very extroverted introvert is how I look at it. You can do the same. Another one, and I use the old, a very old term for it, which is, <laughs> and it, it, I love the, I love the term. It's dipsomania. All right. Dipsomania is somebody who is typically very dry, you know, alcoholic speaking, until they have been go on a bender, and all of a sudden they get just slobbery, stinking drunk. They twist one off, and it it they're gone. Dipsomania is another term for alcoholism, <laughs> and people do they stop being sociable. They they see alcoholism as a limitation. This is one reason why so many alcoholics find themselves in the positions that they're in because they've seen themselves. This is my fault. This is, you know, I I'm, I'm broken. I'm no good. I'm, they beat themselves up, which causes them to want to have more and drink more alcohol to forget about the fact that they actually claim that they are, they're broken and they're no good. And they're, they're useless to society and all this. 
And because of that, so many, there's a lot of alcoholics who finally give up on that self, that self talk, that self doubt and turn themselves around. But there's a lot who don't and they are, they die because of the alcoholism because they got themselves drunk, got into a car wreck because they don't see, they were told that they have a disease. Well, I can't have a, I, I've got a disease. I can't help it. You know, it's just, a, it was, I caught it from the alcohol b- uh, germ. Yeah. Apparently it's a disease somewhere along the way. It became a disease. It's a, it's a choice that you made. You choose to pick up a bottle uh, of, of bottle of wine, a bottle of whiskey or whatever. And they're all choices. Now, a lot of people want to fight back against that and go, no, it's not a choice. He can't help it. No, it's a bad coping mechanism. I have a bad thought. I had a thought that does not bring me joy, doesn't bring me happiness. And I'm not happy right now. I have to be happy all the time. And that's crap. That's not right. That's There's a 50-50 principle at play. Half of your life is going to suck balls. The other t- half is going to be elation, el- elation. It's just going to be the best times in the world around. And other t- time is just going to be just a drag. It's going to be horrible. It's not going to be fun. It's going to be sadness and anger, frustration, jealousy, you know, any of these, these types of, uh, of emotions. And it's all because we decide, you know, I don't, uh, I, I'm not worthy. It's a thought. It's a th- I have a flaw amongst me, and the only way I can get rid of this th- flaw is to drink alcohol. Another one, and this one is one that's come out real soon, and all the youngins, all the, the millennials, the the Zoomers, and now Gen Alpha is all having a great time with this one because it gives them such an excuse to say, I'm broken, I can't do anything, and that's anxiety, which is hilarious because anxiety is nothing more than you experiencing something new. That's all you're doing. When you have, when you experience anxiety, that's your brain going, uh, this is something new. We don't know what we're supposed to do here. It's just warning you of, Hey, this is something unexperienced before. Oh, I've been out in people before. Yeah. And you let your anxiety run your life. Oh, I can't. I've got a, I've got social anxiety. Bullshit, man. Bull. That is nothing more than what that is. It's just plain unadulterated bacon sandwiches, otherwise known as BS. You want to know how you get rid of anxiety? You face it repeatedly over and over. Well, they're talking about me. Good. Apparently you're worthy of being talked about. You can change how everything that you're all the exi- the self doubting talk that you give yourself is just you. It, are they talking about you? You don't know. Are they looking at you and talking? Yeah, but you have no idea what they're talking about. You may have a decent idea, but you really don't know. Are they talking about you? Yeah, they could be saying something bad and horrible and ugly and saying something that, you know, that, you know, good grief. Who wears a green Muppet shirt right out out in public? Well, for one, I do. I've got a green Muppet shirt on right now. And or it could be like. Dude, I can't believe it. He's what's the name of that one animal, that one puppet that's got all the the hair and he plays the drums and he's ah, you can't make it. Doesn't really make much coherent words. Animal, yeah, yeah. And they could be talking about you know the fact that animals on my shirt. You don't know specifically, and even if they are saying something horrible and nasty about you, that's something you can actually look at as a positive. You have such an influence in somebody's life, they have to try to talk down about you. There's so much good that happens when you change how you're looking at a at a terrible thing. Another one that people like to uh to talk down about is autism. Now, are there time are there types of autism that are really bad and they there's they are completely lost in their head? Yeah. Yeah, there are those. There's also types of schizophrenia that's like that, except that there's also schizophrenics who have had a very profound life. Watch a beautiful mind. Great example of that. Autism. There's a lot of people who like. I think there's a lot of people who are very autistic. Then there are the people who want to be autistic and wish they could be autistic. So they decide that they are autistic. And then they try to use that as a limitation, which is sad. It's like, no, dude, if you, you look at the world differently. All right, sweet. And no, ADHD is not on the spectrum. All right. The whole neurodivergent BS, like I mentioned earlier, can't stand that there are people try to put, 
oh, we got to make everybody into this one little group. No, you don't have to be a part of any freaking group. Do you have a limitation? Maybe. Only if you decide that it's a limitation. Autism. I have, I have a, uh, uh, I guess a step, uh, not a step, a, a cousin in law, second cousin in law. Anyhow, got some, some relatives who have some type of actual level of, of autism. Got, got, uh, Asperger's and they've gone through the military and are out living their life now. Do they like to obsess about certain stuff at certain times? Heck yeah. There's nothing actually wrong with it. I mean, we found it really annoying whenever he thought he was dinosaur for like six hours. But <laughs> but that was our own thoughts about what the circumstance was. To him, hell, he was having a good old time being a dinosaur for six hours. He was amazing. He had He was committed. I mean, come on. He was really committed. Asperger's is a completely different aspect. You can have... I really don't, I, I, the more I look at it and the more I try to come to understand it, the more I really don't think autism is a full spectrum like people want to say. I think there are different levels, but there are very defined levels. And some people don't want those levels because then they can just go, oh, there's so many autistic people around. Because And I, the reason why I throw such a fit about autism is because there is a public service announcement out there and there's like five, six, uh, different renditions of this autistic autism awareness, public service announcement. But the funny thing is, is when you listen to all of them, they say that, uh, one in 10, uh, people have autism and another one, one in 143 has autism. One in, uh, has autism. None of the numbers the one in numbers are ever the same. And like I said, there's like five, five to 10 of them I, that rotate around. And so one might be one in 423, one's 1,025, one in one, uh, one in 480, one in 128, you know, it's just all over the place. And it's like, y'all don't even know how many actual autistic people are out there. I mean, come on, you look at Temple Grandin, she overcame her limitations. She is a celebrated agriculturalist. She made giant strides in animal husbandry. She's autistic. You, and I think she's actually gotten around where she kind of handles people, uh, accepts people touching her according to what her, uh, her film biography was, uh, her filmography, you know, that, uh, that she really didn't like for people to, uh, to touch her, but an amazing woman had autism. It didn't stop her. So, all of this, why does a flaw like any of those actually hold us back? And it's the, it's the root of all of our problems, all of our suffering that we have in our life. It all boils down to the very same thing. It's our thoughts about what the flaw means to us, what that limitation is. Do we believe that limitation is too big or too small? Because I can tell you right now that if it was what you said was true. Nobody would be able to do that at that, who had that same flaw. But yet we have blind people who play the piano like Stevie wonder, like Ray Charles. We have blind people who write books. There are deaf people who actually record podcasts. Also addicts drop their, their compulsions on a split second every day. All of a sudden they get told they've got lung cancer or they possibly have lung cancer. Poof. Cigarettes are gone. No withdrawals, nothing like that. Boom, just gone. Alcoholics who think they may have cirrhosis of the liver. Boom, drop the bottle. Why? Because they had a why that overcame the motivational triad. They had the thought they are not going to go back to that. I dropped smoking. Took me through. I took it the route where it was three months and I did it twice. Second time I thought I I could. I've, I, I've gone without a cigarette long enough. I can control it. I can have one, you know, on the each weekend or something. <laughs> yeah, no, nope. I have a cigarette. It's a cigarette, two cigarettes, four cigarettes, five cigarettes, a pack, a pack and a half, two packs. Within a month, I'm up to two packs again already. So I've smoked for two years on that. And I was like, okay, okay. I, I'm noticing weird physiological issues here. So I'm dropping. And I did. In October, I dropped, and by by uh, December, actually, no, it was August, September, October. So yeah, in in uh, in August, I dropped, and by November of of twenty twenty two or twenty yeah twenty twenty two, I was done. I 
knock no, that stopped it. It's like, all right, we're not we're not pulling that anymore. Not having a cigarette. I would still like to. I still have times where I think it's like, yeah, man, that would be real nice. That was a good meal. I'd love to have, just step outside, light up a smoke, and just enjoy the and relish in the the sensation, the the satisfaction that out, nicotine dumps into your system, which is nothing more than just nicotine connecting to a particular neuroreceptor. You can drop your compulsions. Your flaw is just a thought about a certain circumstance. That's all it is. You have a circumstance. You've got uh, you've got a, a a a predication to just start looking. You know, of not holding concentration very long. Well, have you started trying to use mindfulness? Have you started trying to find ways of understanding why you can't hold your mind on one task very long? Maybe you like to switch topics. You get bored easy. There's reasons why, and that's okay because you know what. Even if you have ADHD, you can just work work like the devil on a particular thing, find the satisfaction. Because most ADHD kids, you, you know what? They'll sit down and they'll play a freaking video game for hours on end and not have a problem with it. So they can hold the attention. You just have to be able to come up with the reason why you want to hold that attention. I can get a podcast, a blog post, and two blog posts done in a day. Today, I'm actually going to be working at getting two bo- uh, podcasts, a blog post, and a uh, or and two blog posts done today. I'm going to up my up my game. But to do that, I have to decide I'm going to be dedicated. I have to decide this is what I'm going to do. So why do we want that flaw to hold us back? That's the big question. That's another really big question. Why do you want that flaw to hold you back? Most people say, well, I, I don't want it to hold me back then stop letting it hold you back. The reason why is because it's safer for you to just sit there and go, well, I, I can't help it. I'm I'm a victim. I don't have to try so hard if I'm a victim. I don't have to worry about trying to uh trying to to do something that would make becoming a becoming a a a, a goal accomplisher better. You know who's in the sixties and seventies, you know who the best doctors were? If you wanted to have a doctor and you wanted to have the best doctor in town, you know who you who you went to? You found a black doctor. Want to know why? It's not because they're smarter or anything. It's because they had to actually overcome more obstacles to show that they knew what they were doing. Those black doctors, whether it's right or wrong, they had to show they knew their crap. They knew what they were talking about. They knew what was going on. They had a little more scrutiny. Was it like I said? It may not be right, but it was that was the circumstance. And there were doctors who were committed to becoming doctors, and they did it. And they beat they beat the system. You can beat the system. You don't need an old white dude standing around going, "You can't get this done unless you have my help." which is sadly a lot of what's going on. That's a lot of why society is acting the damn fool that it's acting right now. Because too many people are standing around going, well, we don't have any power. We want to have some power. We want to have some influence in our world and what we see and what we do. And so they go off and do stupid stuff like burn down their old neighborhood. They rob from from their local Walmart until the Walmart goes, yeah, we're not here anymore. We're, We're shutting down. We're leaving. Their actions, their thoughts create their own results. They think it's not fair that they don't have a good job. So instead of trying to get a better job, they just go and shut down the job that other people have so they can't get another can't get a job. Makes no sense. Your flaw can be the biggest destroyer in your life, or it can be the biggest superpower you ever had. That's your choice. Is do you see your imperfection as a flaw? Or as a superpower, if it is actually a flaw, you know, you've got something that if you were to drop it, you could do better and you can drop it like a habit, like an addiction, which is actually not an addiction. It's actually just a, just a coping mechanism. You can, you can figure out how to get rid of it and become better and clear, think clear. If it's something physical, there's ways of changing that, that role too. You've always got the opportunity you just have to look at the opportunity to decide that you actually want it. Is what is holding you back the reason you're being going to be great? Or is it the reason why you're staying small? Because maybe that obstacle is what you actually need in your life right now so that you become the best person out there. 
become the greatest businessman, become the greatest entrepreneur, become the greatest whatever it is you want to do, the greatest family man. Maybe that ADHD, maybe that alcoholism is what you need to overcome so that you become the best dad, the best husband, the best businessman, the best whatever it is you're wanting to accomplish, whatever your dream is. What's keeping you from actually achieving that dream is that obstacle. That obstacle is the way. All you have to do is take the time and look at it and decide, do you really want to change? If you want to be able to change, you want to be able to have a a better life and a better chance and overcome any obstacle that you see, then I recommend you reach out to me. I would like for you to go to relaxmail.com forward slash coaching offer, all one word. Fill out that form. This is something that is strictly for the local podcast, for the podcast listener. This is a, just a special offer for you. My goal is to get 10 clients this year. I've got five. I've got my free five in. That free free coaching offer is closed. It's done. It's gone. It's in the it's it's in the past now. If you didn't jump in before, I'm sorry to hear it. But I'm still I'm offering the coaching offer now is at 95% off. That means $300. You're not going to find this coaching package at $300 ever again. When I get five people who sign up and want to do a $300 coaching offer, it's going to be done. It's going to be taken care of. It's going to be gone. It's going to be, be, it's going to be a thing of the past. But for the time being, if you can go to coaching, relaxmail.com forward slash coaching off, or just shoot me an email and say, how hey, I'd like that special special uh, offer. And the only way you can ju- email is Brian with a Y at relaxmail.com. But reach out, contact me, tell me that you are wanting that special coaching offer. It will, uh, we'll, we'll look at it. But the moment I get the five people in, the, the offer is closed and then it will climb up to 90%. All right. Be 90% off. You want a chance to work one-on-one with me so that you can start stepping through life with more confidence Stepping through life and having a having a head on your shoulder that will allow you to draw the attention of those who also want greatness in their life. That's what my coaching does. It allows you to find the confidence, find the dream, the passion, the drive to go through and do what you want to do. You're going to do it and you're going to find you're going to live your life on your terms. You want to have your your marriage solidified? Boom. We go through coach and I coach you through the situations that you face so that you can actually find the the power to to actually live your life to the fullest live your life with confidence with surety that not any, anybody else could actually find except for you if you want that relaxedmail.com forward slash coaching offer all together one word and I'll I'll hear from you then So guys, with that, I want to say thank you very much for listening. Y'all take care. I will see y'all next week. Till then, go out, take action, be active, take action, because that's what makes you a man. Bye.